my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome to my first vlog of 2022. Uh, it's gonna take a while for me to get used to saying that year, um, but with my job, um, I have to write the year quite often. So hopefully I will soon get it into my head that it's 2022. Um, I hope if you celebrated Christmas that you had a really lovely time. Um, I hope that you got to eat lots of yummy food and I really hope that you got to relax and enjoy some of your hobbies. Um, I got to do a little bit of sewing, but actually I haven't sewn since, I think it was the 27th was the last day that I sewed because then we went up north, um, up to Manchester to visit family, which was lovely because uh, for the last two years we haven't been able to see family over Christmas. So that was really lovely. Um, and then my twin sister came down to London with me with her children. Um, and I've enjoyed just showing them the sights of London. We had a really fun day yesterday when we went and saw Buckingham Palace and um, loads of different things that the children wanted to go and see. Went on lots of tubes. My nephew, who's four, has absolutely loved seeing all of the buses and going on the tube and the train and seeing all the aeroplanes too. So it's been a really lovely sort of week and a little bit of just filling up on family time it's been really lovely which has meant that I haven't actually done any sewing so today we're off to the theatre which is why I'm wearing something a little bit more fancy than I would normally for these sorts of videos um, we got tickets to go and see Matilda two years ago before Covid this is the third time that we have changed the tickets because the first time um, it got postponed because of Covid the second time I think it was the second lockdown that came in or the third lockdown that came in so I had to move it again um, so third time lucky and hopefully, I mean, we haven't heard from the theatre to say that it's not going ahead. So fingers crossed, we'll get to go and actually watch Matilda finally um, this afternoon. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I'm filming this video. Um, it's a Sunday. I normally film them on a Sunday um, and hopefully I'll be able to get this edited and out to you today. So it's the 2nd of January today. Um, and then the other thing to say is just a happy new year. I hope you all had a wonderful new year. We had a tiny little party at home with the children. Uh, just some party food, lemonade and juice. We stayed up and watched the fireworks. My family from Manchester absolutely loved seeing all of the fireworks up in London. Uh, we just watched um, out of the window and it was really exciting. So happy new year and thank you for coming back to watch another of my videos. I've got lots and lots of vlogs planned. So what I'm planning to do this year is still do my Sunday sewing catch ups because I really enjoy doing those as a roundup of my week. Um, but what I'm also going to be doing is um, filming other vlogs for during the week. So I'll always have a vlog that comes out on a Sunday and then I'm going to aim for a Wednesday because that feels like sort of middle of the week. So I've got vlogs planned. I've written them down in my notebook, actually. So I've got a list of vlogs that I want to do over the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to be um, sharing what my make nine plans are. And I've shared that over on Instagram already. I'm going to have a little bit of a different approach to my make nine this year because last year I found it quite restrictive and I get quite distracted with patterns and my taste changes over the years. So I'm going to be approaching that differently. Um, I want to recap my top 10 makes from 2021. Again, over on my Instagram, I shared a little video of all of the things that I made. I'll see if I can put it in actually so you can see all of the things that I made last year. I want to share what my top 10 and it was quite hard to choose just 10 but I'm going to share my top 10. Um, I also want to share what my plans are for this month um, and I'm going to be doing a plans video every month as well and then I'm also going to be doing a recap of the things that I made across the month. So I've got December's vlog to film and then I'm going to be filming what I made in January as well as my Sunday sewing catch up so hopefully I can keep up with that schedule. Anyway that was a very very long introduction and um, I've just had my hair cut 
Um, it's always lovely to get a haircut before school goes back. So we go back on Tuesday, which I'm really excited about seeing the children and hearing about their Christmas holidays. Um, but I do like getting my hair cut before I go back. So I am wearing the Kokowawa Nutmeg Trench Coat in this gorgeous like linen fabric that I got from Sumi Sunshine that's sat in my stash for ages. The Nutmeg Trench is a coat pattern, but actually using this fabric, it's quite a lightweight fabric and it, to me, looks more like a dress. So it's got these gorgeous billowy sleeves. It's got this gorgeous collar detail, which you probably can't see, but it's got this tiny little ruffle going around the edge. Reminds me of the Nina Lee Bakerloo blouse. Um, I've got these gorgeous uh, Pigeon Wishes buttons. You can just about see them there. Um, and then if I stand up, I've got a belt cinching it in. So if I undo the belt, um, it's a really drapey dress. Uh, well, it's not a dress, it's a coat, but it's really, really drapey. I love that style. It's almost like... It's just really billowy, but I prefer to use the belt to bring it in. And then if I stand up, it stops below my knee. You can see my knees are there. And I've just got it on with black tights today. And then I've just got some black ankle boots that I'll wear with it too. And I think it'll be perfect for going to the theatre. So I'm really excited about that a little bit later. So I usually start these videos um, with what I've been sewing. So I've got a couple of things that I've been sewing that I haven't shared yet. And I've got a few things that I've been sewing that I've shared in my Vlogmas videos. Um, I also wanted to say a massive thank you for everybody that watched my Vlogmas videos. I really, really enjoyed taking part in it. It was a lot of extra work, but it was really fun. Um, and I just really enjoyed that style of video, just sharing snippets of what I was getting up to. So if you watched my Vlogmas videos, thank you so much for taking the time to watch them. There were so many across the month and there was lots of wonderful people taking part in Vlogmas too. I'm still working my way through watching everybody's Vlogmas videos, but um, they're really interesting to watch. You get a real snippet into other people's lives and I just think I really like that relaxed approach to the vlogs. So thank you so much to everybody that watched them and interacted with me. I really appreciate it. So what have I been sewing? I've been sewing a couple of gifts actually. Um, I sewed up some loungewear for my husband, which I'll start with. And I've talked about sewing this up for ages, um, using this neon um, rib knit fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. It's a bright, it's described as peach, but it's actually quite bright. Um, my husband absolutely loves it. So I got, I think I got two meters of this fabric. Um, and I wanted to turn it into a loungewear set for him, which I did last Christmas. And he really enjoys wearing loungewear when we get home from work. He normally has a shower and then pops on his loungewear and he feels really comfortable. So I used the um, Hudson pants, the True Bias Hudson pants for men. Um, it's a pattern that I've used for him before. He really likes the fit of them. It's got an elasticated waistband and then it's got pockets, which he really likes. And it's got cuffs on the bottom. Now, I didn't have enough of the fabric to match the waistband and the cuffs and the pockets as well. So what I ended up doing was using some contrast fabric. I had a little bit of grey pontel fabric left from my pyjamas that I made for my family. So I used the men's Hudson pants for the bottom. And then for the top, I used the Studio Jepson Rider Tee, which is a men's pattern. And my husband really likes the style of this T-shirt. It's quite a relaxed fit. So this is the t-shirt, it's got short sleeves, um, you've got a little neckband that you attach and I've just top stitched that neck, neckband and then I put him in a little um, rosy cheeks, little rosy cheeks I think it's, um, is the company, love yourself revolution um, labelling for him. So that is what the t-shirt looks like, it's a relaxed fit, I did get a picture of him wearing this so I can pop that in for you. Uh, so yeah that's the t-shirt and then the trousers, like I said I didn't have enough of the fabric um to match all the way through with the trousers so i ended up doing a contrast waistband um and then i didn't have the right size elastic um and because it was christmas i couldn't get a hold of the right size elastic so i just used a narrow elastic and to make sure that it stays in place i've done a tiny weeny little almost like a paper bag waist at the top so i did a, a row of stitching at the top of the waistband and a row of stitching at the bottom of the waistband just to make sure that the elastic stays the right way and it stays in place um, so these are the Hudson pants. He really likes the pockets. They're quite deep pockets. And then I've just used the same grey fabric for the facing of the pockets. And then on the bottom, I've just used the same grey for the cuffing. Um, he really loves wearing them. They fit him really nicely and they're really comfortable and they do exactly what he wants them to do, which is feel like really comfortable loungewear to put on at the end of a really busy day at work. 
So I'm really pleased that I managed to get those sewn up for him. And those patterns I've used so many times, they're like tried and tested patterns. Um, and I know that they fit him really nicely and the Hudson pants sit on his waist where he wants them to as well. Um, so I've really enjoyed sewing those up for him. Um, and then I set myself the challenge. This has become a bit of a Christmas tradition of sewing up pajamas for myself, my girls and my husband. I like to sew up matching pajamas for us. I've done it over the last couple of Christmases. So I bought some fabric from First for Fabrics. I've got some cotton poplin for the bottoms and then just some grey pontel fabric for the tops. Um, and I had a, a really enjoyable couple of days of sewing them over Christmas. Got them finished just in time for Christmas Eve so we could all wear them for Christmas Eve and we've worn them over the Christmas period as well, which has been really lovely. So I just grabbed them and I can show you what I did. I've only got one pair. I think I picked up my pair of pajamas and I have shared this in my Vlogmas videos as well. I think I shared it in the Christmas Eve Vlogmas. So I used a couple of patterns. I used the Tilly and the Buttons Joe pajama bottoms for my husband. Um, they're a pattern that I've used a lot of times for him before. They're really comfortable and they fit him nicely as well. And then for myself and Ruby and Lola, I used the Sew Over It Ultimate Pajama Bottoms. Um, and what I did for myself, I used them to just sew up a straight size 10 and they fit me really nicely. And then for both Ruby and Lola, um, I used the smallest size and then I ended up taking. So I, I um, sewed the pajamas together and sewed up the trousers and I basted them for both of them. And then I just spent some time fitting them. So I ended up taking for Lola using the smallest size of the ultimate pyjamas, I ended up taking two inches out of both of the outside seams, an inch out of the inside seams. Uh, I think I took two inches out of the crotch front and back. Um, and then I took a little bit off the length and two inches off the top of the pyjamas. Um, so I just used it really as a base for the shape of the pyjama pattern. And then for Ruby, I ended up taking an inch out of the outside seams and the inside seams and an inch off the top. Um, and I'm really pleased with how they've turned out. So this is what they look like. I'm just checking that I've got them the right way around. Yes, I have. Um, so these are the pajamas. Just got a simple elasticated waistband. We've all got the same elasticated waistband. They're really relaxed fit, quite baggy. They're a bit creased because they've been in the cupboard. And then I've just done a hem at the bottom. And then what I did for all of the trousers, because they're all similar style, obviously different sizes, but just to make sure that we all put on the right pyjama bottoms, I used my faff sewing machine. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. And I just embroidered our name onto one of the houses. So that one says mummy. Um, and then I just embroidered their names onto the trousers. So it was really easy for them to see which trousers belong to who. Um, and then for the t-shirts, I used all patterns from Studio Jepson. So I used the Rider t-shirt for my husband. And then I used the KLP t-shirt for myself. And then there's a mini KLP t KLP t-shirt for Ruby and Lola and then this is what it looks like and then what I also did with the t-shirt because I was um, using a similar style pattern and we were all just having this plain grey Pontel fabric um, what I ended up doing was using a fat quarter from a So Hilly Jane box and just appliquing an initial letter onto our t-shirt so M for mummy, C for daddy, L for Lola and R for Ruby and I think that's turned out really nicely this was just some festive um, fabric. It was a fat quarter from the latest So Haley Jane box. Um, and yeah, I'm really pleased with the way that it's turned out. There's a bit of thread on there. Um, but that is it. You can just see that festive snowflake, which is in like gold print. Um, and I'm really pleased with the way that these have turned out. They're quite relaxed fit. You can see they're quite drapey. They've got that curved hem on the bottom. You're supposed to add a cuff onto the t-shirts, but I didn't add a cuff onto any of them because we all didn't want that cuff on there. So they're grown on sleeves, but it's a very short sleeve, which I think works perfectly for pyjamas. And then you've got that little neck band detail as well. Um, really lovely patterns, really enjoyable sew, comes together really simple. Um, for the KLP, you've only got three pattern pieces really, unless you do the, um, the cuff on the sleeves, because it's that grown on sleeve, you've got the front and the back, and then you've got the neck band as well. So quite straightforward construction. Um, and just a really comfortable pyjama top and comfortable t-shirt top as well. I've used it to sew up t-shirts for myself and also for my girls too. So I'm really pleased that I managed to get those pyjamas sewn up. Um, and it was really lovely seeing all of us wearing matching pyjamas at Christmas. So I'm really enjoying that tradition. So I'm going to start thinking already about what fabric I'd like to use next year. And I'll probably stick with the same patterns just because I know that they work really well. 
And I think the last time I checked, the Cotton Poplin First for Fabrics still had it in stock. So I'll link all of the fabrics where possible down below so you can go and check them out if you want to. And then the other thing that I got sewn up was a couple of my favourite jumper pattern, which is the Nina Lee South Bank sweater pattern. So I got um, two sewn up, one using this really fun um, dinosaur print uh, fabric so like really bright um, I think they're sort of like pastel colours of dinosaurs I love the Nina Lee South Bank sweater I love that collar detail because it feels really snuggly you've got the cuff detail on the sleeves and again that feels really snuggly and then what I tend to do is I sew up the version 3 which is slightly cropped and then I add the hem band onto the bottom just because I really like that hem band, I really like that style. It almost creates quite a baggy feel for the jumper and it's really, really comfortable. So I've got that one, I'm gonna enjoy wearing that to school and I think the children in my class will love that because of the dinosaurs. And then if you've watched my videos previously, you'll remember that I was after some fire engine fabric because we were learning about people who help us. Somebody commented and recommended a company where I could find this fabric, so thank you for that. Um, and I finally got around to sewing it up and I've turned it into the Nina Lee South Bank sweater just because I really love that pattern. It's a really comfortable pattern. So I'm going to enjoy wearing this to school as well. So I've got that high collar detail. Again, I've got the cuff um, at the end of the sleeve and then we've got that hem band um, detail at the bottom. I haven't got photos of me wearing these jumpers actually because I've only just finished sewing them and then we've been away and then we've been entertaining so I haven't had a chance to get photos of these uh, South Bank sweaters. But I will put a picture in of me wearing a, a different South Bank sweater just so you can see what it looks like on me. Um, but I really enjoyed sewing that one up. It's one of my favourite patterns to sew and one of my favourite patterns to wear. It comes together really straightforward and I got all of these out of a metre um, which is great really. And then the next thing that I wanted to talk about is something that I haven't actually got photos of because it was a gift. I should have taken photos of it. I don't know why I didn't when I'd finished it. I think I was quite close to the wire finishing sewing it up before we went away. Um, but I used one of my favourite dressing gown patterns. I love this pattern. It's quite straightforward to sew up, um, but you can also fit it to different people. So I've used it for myself and my husband. And then I've also just sewn one up for my mum. I'll see if she'll send me a photo of the dressing gown. Um, and if she does, then I can insert it into this video. But it's the named clothing larger dressing gown. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I say that every time I talk about this pattern. Um, it's spelled L-A-H-J-A. -A. Um, it's a unisex pattern. Comes in sizes extra small up to extra, extra large. Um, and I've used um, like a satin fabric to sew one up. So it was quite drapey and really lightweight. I've used a waffle knit to sew two dressing gowns up. And then the one for my mum, I used this. Um, I wanted to say it's cotton jersey, but it's not. It's a loop back jersey, loop back sweatshirting, I think. And it's got all these narwhals all over it. I originally got this for Ruby. She chose it a couple of years ago, but her taste has completely changed. Um, and that's always the danger when you buy fabric and then it sits in your stash for a while. Um, my mum likes this sort of thing. So when I showed it to her and she opened it, she absolutely loved it. So I'm really pleased that I've been able to use this fabric to turn it into something that somebody's going to love wearing. So it's a navy background and it's got all these narwhals and then it's got all these stars in it. And then it's just a loop back um, fabric, loop back jersey. Um, got lots and lots of stretch and recovery and it's nice and snuggly too. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend a light or medium weight non-stretch fabric, like a natural linen, terry cloth or honeycomb fabric. And for a lighter version, choose rayon or satin. Now, it doesn't recommend stretch fabrics, but I did sew it using this and it sewed up absolutely fine. Um, and it feels quite snuggly, actually. So I would say if you've got this is quite a me, I think it's like medium weight. It's got no drape to it whatsoever. So I think that type of fabric would be absolutely fine to sew this up. Um, for the measurements, an extra small, um, for a full bust measurement, it's 29 and 1 8 of an inch up to 32 and a quarter of an inch for the full bust. For a waist, for the waist measurement, it's 22 and 7 8 of an inch um, to 26 inches. And then for your hip measurement, it's 32 and a quarter inch to 35 and 3 8 of an inch. And then an extra, extra large, it's a full bust measurement, 46 and 7 eighths of an inch to 51 and 5 eighths of an inch. It's really tricky to say these measurements. Uh, for the waist, it's 40 and a half inch to 45 and a quarter inch measurement. And then for your hip, it's 50 to 54 and 3 quarter inch uh, measurement. I really enjoyed sewing this up. 
there's two different lengths you can do a shorter length or you can do a long length i've only ever made the shorter length which stops at your knee the longer length on me goes to my ankle and that's just too long for me for a dressing gown um but it is quite a straight cut robe um the word larger means gift um and it has been really great to sew these up as gifts as well um, like I said, there's two versions, a shorter knee length gown with crop sleeves and a longer version that extends to mid leg. But on me, I'm five foot five and a half. It does stop just above my ankle and it's got full length sleeves as well. And then you've got patch pockets that are really deep. They're brilliant size for putting loads of different bits and bobs in there. And then there's also the belt um, that you can use as well. Really fun to sew up. I would definitely recommend this if you're looking for a dressing gown pattern. So I'm really pleased that I was able to sew up all of those different things. Um, I wanted to then talk about a couple of patterns um, that I was very fortunate to get over Christmas. Um, I've been looking for a beanie pattern for ages. Now I bought this pattern, but the other patterns I was going to talk about were gifts. Um, and it is a pattern by Stay Stitch Pattern Co. And they're over on Etsy. And I think it was Emma who is so do it, Emma, that shared this pattern. Um, so thank you, Emma, if it was you. I did go back to her stories to double check that it was, but obviously the story had gone. Um, so I think it was Emma that I saw on her stories that she'd shared this beanie pattern. It's called the Jude Beanie Beginner Hat um, Pattern by Stay Stitch Pattern Co on Etsy. I'll link them down below. I don't actually have the pattern in front of me because it's a PDF pattern, but I will insert some pictures of what it looks like so you can see. I really love the look of this pattern. It looks like quite a relaxed beanie pattern. Um, you sew it in jersey fabric. It's great for off cuts because you only need um, about half a metre of fabric, which I thought was amazing. And then it comes in different sizes. So from toddler up to extra large and it goes off the size of your head to so your head circumference. So for a toddler measurement, it was between 19 to 20 inches in terms of that measurement. And then for extra large, it's up to 23 and a half inches for your head circumference. Um, you need to knit fabric with 60% stretch, but it just looks like a great pattern for using off cuts of fabric that you've got. My daughter absolutely loves wearing beanie hats and she's been after a specific type of beanie hat to go with her cosplaying. Um, so that's one of the reasons really, or that's the main reason why I bought this pattern because I thought it'd be perfect for sewing her up the perfect beanie that she wants. She's got a really specific idea in her head of what she wants it to look like. So I'm really looking forward to giving this a try and then hopefully making us all beanie hats um, using my off cuts of fabric. And also it's a pattern that I can use for friends that have got um, toddlers as well. So I really liked the look of this pattern. So I just thought I'd let you know if you're looking for a beanie hat um, and it's a really good way of using up your fabric scraps as well. So I'll link those down below. Um, I haven't bought this yet, but I think I am going to buy it. Um, I saw it last year and I resisted, but I am sort of thinking about, I use a notebook to document all of the different things that I've been sewing and making and plans and ideas and that sort of thing. My youngest daughter has really gotten into bullet journaling. She's really enjoying it and she's got a set over Christmas. So Buy Her London shared this last year, but they have tweaked their productivity planner ever so slightly. And then they just shared it again. I think it's £4.50. I'll link it down below, but you get so much with it. You get templates for different things. It's a PDF. So you print it all off or just use the templates for whatever you want to. Um, you get a month to view desk calendar, which you can put on like daily appointments, important dates. And within that, you get the week to view and habit tracker. So you get the days of the week, which are divided by AM and PM. There's space for notes and lists. I love making lists. I've always got lists in this notebook. Um, and there's also a habit tracker included in that month to view. And I really like the idea of that. And then you also get a daily spread. So you can start your day with a positive affirmation or your intentions for the day. Um, a to-do list, which I love. I love a to-do list. I love being able to cross things off that I've got done throughout the day. Daily schedule, meal plan. You can track your sleep. Now, I'm not quite so interested in tracking my sleep, but there are options to do that if you want to. And then there's a day in review, which is a chance to reflect on your day, offload, um, include some gratitude if you want to, um, problem solve, write down things that have cropped up that you still need to figure out or whatever. And then there's also a book tracker. And one of my New Year's sort of goals for this year is to, I don't want to say resolution because I don't really like resolutions, but one of my goals for this year is to read more. I didn't read as much as I'd like to last year. And I've got lots, I think I've got about 15 books 
um, that I want to read and I started reading a book um, yesterday and I've been really enjoying that so I want to read more so there's a book tracker included and then there's also a meal planner and a shopping list and there's loads of other stuff there's like a period tracker and all kinds of things included and for £4.50 I thought it was an absolute bargain and then you could just print out as much as you want to stick it in your own journal if you want to use the templates however you want to it just looked like something that was quite interesting so I just thought I'd share that with you just in case you haven't seen that yet so it's by by Han London then I got a couple of um, patterns as gifts over Christmas so they're things that I have wanted and I asked for um, so the first one was a slip dress pattern that I've seen loads of people making and it's a Friday pattern company pattern and it's called the saltwater slip dress and I really love the look of this. I've got a couple of fabrics in my stash that I think would be perfect for this pattern. So it comes in sizes extra small up to 7x and there are two cup options, a BC cup option and a CD cup option. It's a slip dress with adjustable straps and the option to include ties and there are also two different lengths so there's a knee length and then there's a slightly longer length as well in terms of fabric they recommend light to midweight woven drapey fabric so i've got a couple of sort of viscose satin uh, fabrics in my stash that i want to use um, i've got one particular fabric which is um it's from new craft house and it's got astronaut print over it it's like a dark green fabric had it in my stash for years and I'm desperate to sew it up because it's just sat in my stash and I feel like it's such a lovely fabric it needs the opportunity to be turned into a garment so that it can shine so I'm going to use the larger dressing gown to create a shorter length um, dressing gown and then I'm also going to use the Friday Pattern Company um, saltwater slip dress pattern to create a little slip as well and um, so I'm really looking forward to that and I think it'd be great um, use of that fabric so I think it'll drape really nicely and it'll move really nicely too in terms of sizes, for an extra small, it's a bust measurement of 32 to 33 inches, a waist measurement of 24 to 25 inches, and a hip measurement of 34 to 35 inches. And then for a 7X, it's a bust measurement of 59 to 60 inches, a waist measurement of 52 to 53 inches, and then a hip measurement of 62 to 63 inches. I've seen so many beautiful versions of this pattern, so I'm really excited about getting it. I ordered the PDF pattern and I've ordered it to be copy shop printed uh, from the fold line. Um, so I'm really excited about that arriving in the post. And then the next pattern that I was fortunate to get as a Christmas present was the new pattern by By Hun London, which is the Marie shirt and dress. And it's a lovely Marie who is Marie stitched up. I'll link her Instagram down below, but I'm sure you will follow her. And she's such a lovely person. Um, and the pictures of her for the pattern are just absolutely beautiful. She made such a wonderful model. Um, and um, I really love some gorgeous details of this shirt and shirt dress. I've got loads of shirts and shirt dress patterns. I did um and ah about whether I needed another one, but there's some beautiful features that I particularly love the pie crust collar. And then there's some gorgeous pin tucks on the shirt as well. So I'm really looking forward to sewing this one up. I've got some cotton poplin in my stash, which is one of the recommended fabrics, which I think is just going to work beautifully for this pattern. So it comes in sizes UK2 to UK38, and there are two cup sizes, the B cup, which is the UK2 to 24, and then a D cup, which is the UK16 to 38. It's a smock style shirt and shirt dress pattern with pin tucks along the shoulder and neck. It's got loose fit, gorgeous billowy bishop sleeves, which I absolutely love. And then there's two collar options. Both of them are beautiful collar options. So you've got a frilly pie crust collar or you've got a double collar as an option. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight wovens like a cotton, a cotton lawn, a poplin, a linen, silk and crepe. And then in terms of the measurements, for a UK2, which is the B cup measurement, for a high bust it's a 29 inch, a B cup 31 inch, waist 24 inch and then hip 34 inches and then for a uk 38 61 and three quarter inch measurement for your high bust for your bust it's a 65 and three quarter inch measurement for your waist 60 and three quarter inch measurement and then for your hips 67 and three quarter inch i'm really looking forward to sewing up the shirt but also the shirt dress there's so many beautiful versions that i've seen already so i'm really excited about that pattern so i'll link it down below um if you haven't seen it already but i'm sure you have it's absolutely beautiful and all of the models look absolutely stunning um in the new pattern so i'm really excited about getting stuck into that one 
And then there's a new challenge that I wanted to talk about. That's my final thing, I think, for this video. There's a new challenge which is going to be running in the month of February, and it looks like a really good challenge to start the year. It's a sewing challenge hosted by Made by Liesl, and I'll link her Instagram in the description down below so you can go and check her out. Um, and the hashtag is Refebulous. And the idea behind it is a sustainable sewing challenge to encourage and inspire each other to repair or refashion or reuse clothes and make something fabulous again. And I'm sure we've all got some of those things in our wardrobe that maybe don't fit as well anymore, or maybe the stitching is starting to come undone, or you might have a tiny little hole, or it's something that you made like two years ago and you don't reach for it anywhere anymore. So you can choose one or more of the categories um, listed, which on, I'll go through in a second. And the idea is there's sort of a rough schedule that you can follow across the month of February for sharing different things. It doesn't matter if you miss a week or if you want to share your refashion or your um, sort of your repurpose of your clothes or your reuse of your clothes. You can just share that at the end of the challenge, but it's going to run for the whole of February. And I've got a few things thinking about my Anna Allen Pomono pink corduroy trousers that I need to fix. That would be perfect for this. I can't wear them at the moment because I've got a hole in the back of them. But this is the perfect challenge to encourage me to get that sewn up. Um, and I've got a couple of um, suggested ways to mend those. So thank you to everybody that helped out with how I should best repair them. I haven't actually got around to repairing them yet um, because I enjoyed just spending time with my family over Christmas. But I am going to be getting back using my sewing machine over the next couple of weeks. And I'm really excited about that. So the three different categories that you've got for this challenge. The first one is repairing. So mending clothing or tweaking the fit. Uh, the second one is refashioning. So creating new wearable pieces using thrifted or gifted um, items or items from your wardrobe that you don't use anymore. And then reusing. So reusing clothes, fabric, curtains, um, any fabric that you've got in your stash. Um, so I'm really looking forward to mending some of my clothes, but also I've got a huge bag of scraps that I sorted out towards the end of last year. One for creating an Elmer um, sort of themed garment, and then one which is going to be based on the story, The Rainbow Fish. Um, so I've got blues and purples and greens off cuts of fabric. So I'm really looking forward to what I think I'm going to do with those off cuts of fabric is... Um, draw a square template and then cut the fabrics into squares, sew them together so I've got massive pieces of fabric and then use that as a whole piece of fabric to turn into a garment. I really like that this challenge runs across the whole of February. So the 1st to the 6th of February, we're going to be encouraged to share plans. The 7th to the 13th of February, we're encouraged to share the process so far. The 14th to the 20th of February, who's doing the work? Um, and then week four is showcasing what you have created across the month of February in the Refebulous Challenge. So I'm really excited about getting stuck into this. I think it's going to be the motivation that I need to actually do something with those scrap fabrics that I've got. So I just wanted to share that in case you're looking for something similar. Um, and it gives you enough time to sort of start thinking now or going through your wardrobe and looking at what you can use for that challenge when we get to February. So I just thought I'd share that with you and link all the details in the description below for you as well. So that was everything that I wanted to share in today's um, Sunday Sewing Catch Up. I was also really fortunate over Christmas to get a Quick Up Maker. So I've got a Quick Up Maker 2 machine and I'm just getting my head around that. I'm going to go to um, John Lewis and get some Quick Up Maker like vinyls and all the different bits and bobs that I need to start using my machine. But if anyone's got any suggestions of where I can look for ideas, I know Paige Joanna shares a whole host of things over on her YouTube channel. So I've been checking out those videos. But if anyone's got any suggestions of who else I can check out to get my head around my Quick Up Maker too, please do let me know in the comments below if you've got any suggestions of where I can look, where I can buy um, things to go with my Quick Up Maker too. Um, and the suggestions of projects that I can start with. I'm really excited about using my Cricut Maker alongside my sewing, and I'll share different things that I get up to with that as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, it'd be amazing if you could hit that subscribe button. I'll be back in the week, hopefully, with another video, and then I'll be back next Sunday with my next Sunday sewing catch up. I'm off now to go and watch Matilda. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day. Take care and I'll be back soon. Bye.